People are going to pay attention to me. Right, <laughs> <laughs> I better give you that. You can see my backside again, all right? That's creepy. Only the minister, right? All right, all right. This is ooh, this is good. Hanging on the head, be alive. But it, it, it's really getting back to the issue of trying to figure out how to do things. You know, people said, well, you well, you know, how do you know all this stuff? And I said, well, I don't. So how's that affect you? I said, well, I just learned how to do it. And there's no reason why you can't do things yourself. And, of course, the obvious answer is, where did you go and learn that? What college did you go? I said, college? That's for kids who want to keep away from their parents. <laughs> You can't learn that. You've got to learn it everywhere else. That's not going to work. But when you do it, when you do something the first time and it's a success, what happens? Your eyes light up. You feel good. You know, you feel comfortable that you can actually do this thing again. i got to tell you a little story. I used to work for the Beverly Hills Art Institute. It's a kind of interesting place there, but it's in L.A. That's interesting right there. And I was teaching Art Studio, it's a, a design work, I was teaching a lot of this Adobe software stuff. And I was teaching the business aspect of how to use computer graphics to make a business out of it. And they said, oh, we're holding a fashion show, Pete, uh, we need someone to do a video. I said, oh, that's great, it, you know, who would that be? And they said, uh, we're looking at him. I said, well, hang on, I've never done that before. And I thought, I've got the fear factor going on here. It's not good. So what happened, I decided that I would learn how to do that. And here we go. I got myself a $20 camera. Well, I want one with a little tape in it. And then a friend of mine said, well, i got a computer and uh, you can use that. And it's got software on it. The software was called Windows Movie Maker. <laughs> well, mate, you might as well just have a piece of paper and rub it on your backside, and that's about as best you can get out of it. <laughs> it, it really is really raw and rough. But you know what? I ended up making a really cool movie. They love it, and to this day, it's still on their website. <laughs> that's criminal. <laughs> but the bottom line is that you'd be surprised what you can do if you really uh, escape the fear factor. And I, I would never have been in a position I am today without having known and understood that philosophy that it, you can do anything if you really want to. And I'm getting to a point where what I've learnt is not necessarily what I want to retain. So it's really important that you get to a point where you want to help others with this stuff, with this knowledge. I mean, I've got extra knowledge baggage here I want to dump, so if anyone stands at the door, I'll give them a load. <laughs> but the bottom line is that you've got to be able to help people with the knowledge you know. It doesn't cost anything. And it's a great thing. And it's a funny thing, too, because, you know, when I was early, in my early age, people really mystified about me. Well, actually, they still are now, but... That's another story. And maybe I am a freak of nature. I know I've got a weird brain, so we'll just leave it at that. But I didn't have the dollars like Warren Buffett or uh, Bill Gates. That's their way of contributing. They do an incredible job. And there's people in this audience who do an amazing job in the community. Look at Joe. I know you're hiding behind the desk there, Joe. But that's the point. point. And now I made a mine up the back of the room there. He does a great, it's great stuff. And look at Reverend Jay. Their, their whole life is committed to helping people. Because we all have a set of skills. And the thing is, you've got to make it your passion. Because when you make a skill your passion, it's not work anymore. It's fun. So I got to make, an, I got to really like making movies. You know, you don't want to hear about that, but I love making movies. And so I just come to this place, and I'm the guy that's running around with a camera in everybody's face. And the reason is because at the end of the day, I can make something really cool 
Who's seen the movies that we produce here? Yeah. Yeah. That's not work. That's not work. That's fun. And a lot of people think it's fun too. And that's a scary thing. <laughs> and, the most, and the weirdest thing that when, when you do work for other people and you work and you help other people, you feel good. They feel good and you feel good. Hell, in business, that's called a win-win, right? So what's wrong with that plan? And apparently, according to others, that people who help others live longer. That's scary too. You've got to put up any more. But you never know when the impact, what impact is going to have on somebody. I want to tell you a couple of instances which really kind of popped my mind. I used to belong to a place in Los Angeles called Agape. Anybody know that? It's in Santa Monica Church, really, it's a sign thing yeah. with Michael Beckwith. And there's a huge congregation, a huge <coughs> full of people. And a lady come up to me and tapped me on the shoulder and says, Pete. I said, well, what's that? She said, oh, you don't remember me? And I said, not at all. She said, oh, I'm the, uh, you spoke to me a couple of years ago about a book I was writing. And I said, uh, really? And she said, yeah, you spoke about certain things that you felt that I could use to help me write my book. And she wrote a book, and that was the response that she gave me two years later, so you never know. And I was in Fry's the other day, and this guy in a wheelchair came up to me and said, hey, mate. I said, oh, how you doing? I said, um, what's happening? You know, he's kind of really friendly, and I wondered what he was buying bananas for, but that's another story. <laughs> and he said, he said, oh, you don't remember me? And I said, no, well, um, actually, I might, if you tell me a bit more. He said, oh, you were at Crossroad there one day a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, I think, and you pushed a button and helped me across the street, pushing his wheelchair across the street. See, the thing is, the simplest things you do sometimes have the biggest impact on others. And that's, the, that's what the, the beauty of this whole thing is. And there's a, uh, a, a story here, there's a catch line by the, uh, I think it's a Chinese proverb, but it doesn't sound that way, but we'll rock it anyway. If you want happiness for an hour, take a nap. If you want happiness for a day, go fishing. And if you want happiness for a year, Rob a bank. <laughs> but if you want happiness for a lifetime, help somebody. Now, the worst could happen is you could end up like me, a freak. A weirdo. Who's up for weirdos? Let's go for weirdos. Yeah. <laughs> because finding your talent, finding your talent and making it a passion is fun. It really is fun, and it really makes life all about it. gives you incredible meaning. Because sharing it is absolutely priceless. Amen. Amen? Amen. Let's do it. Let's help somebody. Thank you.